All righty. Is everyone ready for the letter noon? Yay. We now have this famous letter. Is it up? Yes. We have the letter noon. It's the 14th letter of the Hebrew alphabet. Do you know when the first time the word, which is a letter noon, is mentioned? It is in Exodus 33, 11. It talks about Joshua, the son of noon. Uh, and the word noon uh, imply, it means fish. Uh, but more than fish, it means life. All right? And when I say, it can also be spelled noon like N-O-O-N, but it also, as you see in the Bible, it's spelled N-U-N, but it's not Joshua, the son of a nun. It's the son of noon. Okay, now it signifies more than just fish. It means life. Uh, now, the noon has a different form at the end of a, a word where it changed shape. It goes from, as you can see, the first one on the right to where the bottom drops out like a door or drawer opens up. Uh, when it is at the end of a word. But noon represents fish, but more than that, it means life. So every Hebrew letter is a word, and that's how you spell the word for fish, noon. It's the noon, yud noon. Uh, and in the ancient picture language, it was like a fish darting through water. And if you bring the one corner down, you can see where we get our letter N from the letter noon. Uh, it's the number 50, and the symbolic meaning is life. Now, the thing about it, the word noon can mean a kingdom, and in particular, it can imply the heir to the throne. Listen to uh, Genesis 21, 23, and here's how the word is spelled. It's noon, yud, noon. And it says in Genesis 21, 23, Now, therefore, swear to me here by God, that will you will not deal falsely with me nor with my son. So here the word for son is not Ben. The word for uh, son here is noon or neen. Actually, it's neen. It's pronounced neen. Uh, so here son, you know, doesn't have to be bar. It doesn't have to be Ben. It can be neen. Now, uh, noon with a vav, all right, uh, is a primitive root, and it means to re-sprout or to propagate by shoots. Um, uh, it implies to be perpetual or continued. And so the word noon can mean to continue in perpetuity forever, or it can imply eternal life. Now, the heir uh, to David is the Messiah ben David, of whom, listen to this, it is said, as long as the duration of the sun... His name shall rule. Now, here's this verse. Uh, Sherry and I were talking a little bit before the service, but it's in Psalm 72, 17. And it says, His name shall endure forever. His name shall be continued as long as the sun. And the Hebrew word for continued there, uh, is, they say the same word twice. And it's the same word twice. It means uh, forever. Uh, and so that's why they say one of Messiah's name is uh, noon e or eternal. Now, here's the thing about uh, noon. Noon is the 14th letter. Do you see that? Well, it just so happens that David's name is made up of two dalits and a vav. And we know the dalit is four and the vav is six. So David's name is 14. That's why David is connected uh, to uh, the Messiah ben David to eternal life. Uh, and we see that the letter noon, we now know means fish. We know it's the number 14. Uh, we see it's connected to King David, and we see it also refers to the heir on the throne. Uh, that's why in Matthew 1, 1, in verse 17, it talks about the generations of Jesus, the son of who? David. And then it goes on to say, so all the generations from Abraham to David are 14 generations. From David to the captivity are 14 generations. The captivity to Babylon to the Messiah are 14. So every time it says 14, they see David's name. So here it began with David, and then it goes 14, 14, 14. It's saying, David, 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 this is the Messiah, the son of David. 
Now, in Psalm 119, 105, if you remember, there's eight verses for every Hebrew letter. Well, 105 begins for the Hebrew letter noon, and the phrase is, your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. Well, it so happens, the word for lamp is ner, which is a noon and a race. You haven't learned a race yet, but it was a head. And so we see the very word lamp. And how many remember the virgins have lamps? Okay. Well, we see in the ancient Hebrew, it looked like this. So the, symbolically, uh, it means a lamp would bring life to the person. The noon represents life, and we have a person. So the Word of God, which is a lamp, is what brings life to a person. And if you remember in Proverbs 13, 9, the light of the righteous rejoice, but the lamp of the wicked will be what? Put out. And what happens to the foolish virgins? Their lamps were put out. Okay, uh, Numbers 10, 35 through 36 is a very famous verse. Uh, before I go into it, you see the ocean. And if you see fish jumping out of it, you know they are what? Alive. If they're upside down on the beach, what are they? Dead. Dead. Okay. Well, in Hebrew, there's a place in the Bible where there are two letter noons that are upside down and backwards. This implies death. Now, you don't get to see this in the English Bible, but in every Hebrew Bible, there's these two letter noons representing life that are upside down and backwards, which means something has died. Well, this, this one verse, couple verses here, they, the Jews believe are so incredible, they almost say it's a whole other book. They can count it as a whole other book. And uh, in Hebrew, where this place is, this is what the verse is between those two upside down noons. It's where it says, Wherever, whenever the ark set out, Moses said, Rise up, O Lord, may your enemies be scattered, may your foes flee before you. Whenever it came to rest, he said, Return, O Lord, to the countless thousands of Israel. Okay, so because the 14th letter noon means the quickening of life, okay, drawn backwards and upside down symbolizes death, and we know the letter noon stands for King David, especially the Messiah. So what is said, the phrase, rise up, O Lord, speaks of the resurrection of Messiah from the dead. Rise up, Lord. And so the inverted noons illustrate the two great resurrections, the first Messiah's resurrection 2,000 years ago, and the second one when it says, return, O Lord, returns to the second coming when we too will be resurrected from the dead. Woohoo! And so that's what the letter noon is about. Take it away, Sherry! So, we love noon, right? Because it represents life. Everybody say, mm. Mm. Mm is mm. the sound that noon makes as in none or now. Okay. Amazingly, I'm wrapped up in this cord. I got to turn the right way. Okay. Amazingly, the letter before noon is mem in the order of the alphabet. And mem... Uh, means water. Now, mem means water, and what comes next? Noon, which means fish. Now, we know a fish can't live without water, right? Okay. A fish cannot live without water, and Yeshua referred to men as fish, saying, I will make you fishers of men. And then he said, I am the living water. No man can live without the life of Yeshua. Isn't that amazing that the Lord would put Mem and Noon right together in his alphabet? I love it. Okay, the Noon, as Pastor Mark said, represents the number 50. But do you all know how to remember which number it goes with which letter? Let me show you something that Pastor Mark showed me last week that his son Christopher showed him. This is amazing. You'll never forget it. All right, so here we have all the letters in the alphabet, starting with Aleph, right? The first 10 are easy to remember because their place in the alphabet is the gematria or the number that they represent. So Aleph is the first in the alphabet, and it's the number one. Bait is second, and it's the number two. Gimel is third, and it's the number three. Right on through you, that's ten. So there we have one through ten. But now, 
we go to Kaf, which is the 11th letter in the Aleph bet. But how do you remember what the gematria is? Let me show you. You add, since it's the, number, the 11th letter, you add 1 plus 1, which is 2, and you multiply by 10, which gives this the gematria of 20. All right, now let's do Lamed. Lamed's the 12th letter. It's the 12th letter. What's 1 plus 2? 3 times 10 is? 30. And that's the gematria of Lamed. Mem is the 13th letter. What's 1 plus 3? 4. Times 10. And that's the gematria of Mem. Noon is the 14th letter. What's 1 plus 4? 5. Times 10. And noon has the gematria of 50. Is this amazing? So what would Psalmic be? The numerical value of Psalmic. Psalmic is the 15th letter. So what would the numerical value be? Yes. You got it. Perfect. Ein is the 16th letter. So what would the numerical value be? Exactly. And it even works for these last four, which get into the hundreds. And so Kuf is 19. What would the numerical value be? Yes. Excellent. And the last one is 2 plus 2 is 4 times 40. Is times 400. Four is 400. So isn't that amazing? You just take it times 100. Just, the last four you take times 100. Kaf to Sadi you take times 10. They're all times 10. And the Ku, Fresh, Shin, Tav, you take times 100. Is that fabulous? So you'll always know the gematria of these numbers. Okay, noon represents humility <clears throat> because it's like a broken vav. And a vav represents a man. So let's write the noon. Like, man, like kaf and mem, noon has two forms. Okay, so kaf, remember, has two forms. Mem has these two forms. Noon is simple. Everybody ready? You just take a little horizontal line, a short one, come down, and then another short horizontal line going out. That's the noon. In anywhere, anywhere in the uh, word except the very last letter. So just your short line and then out like that. Then the final noon is your short line and you come down below the line. And that's, if, the, if that noon is the very last letter in a word, it looks like that. This little part just straightens out and goes down. All right. Are you ready to read? Let's do some reading. Let's just, I'm going to point to vowel points that are in these words, and I just want you to say the sound of the vowel point first. So the vav with the belly button says, Ooh. Good. The two lines like these, ah, ah, a, 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 o, o, e, o. o. Just the sound of the letter, b, b a, k, a, b, a, E, A, A. Got it? That was a little weak. Come on, you guys. Let's do it again. All right. Let's just do the last line. So this is just B, A, H, A, B, A, E, A, A. All right. So this very last line is right out of the Bible, and I'm going to show you how you can read. You're reading the Bible already today. But first, let's practice with some words that have the noon in them. So this letter is noon. It's going to say n. Right? This is the vowel sound. That's, they're going to work together. So this says new, and the last is a final noon. So it's going to say noon. noon. That's the letter that we're looking at. All right? This word is test. And it starts with the n with an a, ah, so it's na, sa, and this is silent, so it's na sa. That's the word for test. And out of a test, if you pass it, comes a miracle, which is noon, saying n with mm, an a, a. Ne, and a samak. I'm sorry, you don't know these already, but it's hard to find words that you don't know. Okay, so then, so this will say nay with a, so it's nace. nace. 
And here we have ah. This is a r sound with an o, so ah ro n ah ro n. That's the arc. If you put a ha in front of it, remember that's how we do it in Hebrew. We just attach the word. Now it's the ha a r o n the arc. Remember, it's not two separate words; it's one word. Then we have oh, I love this word. Yeah. Pastor Mark and I were talking about it. It's amazing. You have the yud in front with the dot underneath, so it's going to say ye. ye. And then the noon with the vav oh. and the dot above that's going to say no. And the final noon. So you're going to say ye, ye known. known. And ye known, you really just have to hear this. Um, the sages say ye known refers to the Messiah. And should be read as "May His name be known," meaning one who propagates and brings forth eternal life. And that's from Psalm seventy-two, seventeen. That's the verse Which, I read. Yes, and so it's so beautiful. All right, so this is a verse right out of the Bible. <laughs> Let's read it together. This is the bait, so it's going to say "b b b." This is it. Tet, so it's going to say t, and with t. the line underneath, the ta ale. Everybody read it. The ta ale, and then this is the unpronounceable name that we know means Lord. Lord. So this word says trust in the Lord, and then the call. Everybody read it. The call. Call with all leave. Livecha. Now let me show you something cool. You know how they put the letters in front of a word, so this means the ark. Well, they also put letters at the end of a word, and when when there's specific letters at the end of a word, it's a pronoun. So you don't have to learn a lot of different words. You just know that when a cough is at the end of a word, it means you or yours. So look at this: is the word for heart, your heart. So this says, "Trust in the Lord with all your heart." And if you can read that, you can read anything in the Bible as soon as you know the rest of the letters, and you're almost there. Okay. Now I told you last week. This is just something fun and funny that you'll remember. <laughs> in Hebrew, who is he? He is she, and me is who. Got that? <laughs> This is just a funny one. Who is he? The word who means he in Hebrew. The word he in Hebrew is she, and the word me in Hebrew means who. <laughs> and ma is what? And ma is what? That's right. So, who is he? He is she, and me is who. It's just a fun little thing you can remember. And have fun. And that is the amazing noon. <laughs>